Hi, this is Kenny Lee, and let's talk about this combined impulse equation. Impulse is the change in momentum. As a matter of fact, that's sometimes how we ask the question is to find the change in the momentum. Momentum is also defined as the force applied to an object times how long that force acts. Unlike work, where work is force times the distance that force acts, impulse is force times the amount of time that force x. And so we have an equation for each one. Again, some books use j, I use delta p. So impulse equals momentum after minus momentum before, or impulse equals force times time. And since both equations equal the same thing, we can actually combine them to create this combined impulse equation. Ft equals mvf minus vo. And where would you use this? I would use it any time that you have a question, but you're not asked for momentum or impulse. You're asked for something else, like the force that was applied, or how long did that force act, or what was the final velocity of the object after this impulse happened to it. So I would use it for that type of situation. So let's just take a look at a couple. We've got a 2.5 kilogram toy with a force of 200 newtons applied to it for three seconds. The original velocity is two meters per second, and that force is being applied in the same direction as the original velocity. And we want to know the final velocity. Well, this is one of those where we've got a list of information. The mass is two and a half kilograms. Force, and that is a net force, by the way, of 200 newtons is applied for three seconds and we have an original velocity of two meters per second and we're looking for the final velocity. All right, so I've got this huge list of information. I'm not asked for a specific momentum or impulse. I want to know a final velocity. Now we can go back to the kinematics equations and do it or we can look at it through this lens of momentum. So Ft equals mvf minus vo. So force is 200. Time is 3 seconds. Equals the mass is 2.5. Final velocity we don't know, but the original velocity is 2. So we can start working on the math that we've got here. I've got 600 equals 2.5 vf minus 2. Now, if you want to, you can go ahead and distribute this, but I would find it much easier just to go ahead and take that 600 and divide by the 2.5. We get 240. And that would leave vf minus 2 over on this side. And then I would just add 2 to both sides. So we get 242 meters per second is the final velocity, which is really quite huge. We've got this toy going at such a high velocity, uh, it's, it's about two-thirds of the way to the speed of sound. So that's really quite large. So it's not very realistic, but the math works out for us. Let's try another. Now we got a 650-kilogram car traveling 25 meters per second. Uh, there's a force applied to it to slow it down this time to a speed of 12 meters per second. And we want to know how long that takes. So we're looking for a time. So we got a mass of 650 kilograms traveling at, so that's the original velocity, 25 meters per second. We have a force of 1,500 newtons. But this force is to slow it down. So since it's to slow it down, we're going to make that negative. And the final velocity is 12 meters per second. And we've got to find the time. So again, I'm not looking for a specific momentum or impulse. So I'm going to start off with this combined equation. All right, force negative 1,500. Time, but we don't know. That's what we got to find. Mass, 650. Final velocity 12, original velocity is 25. 
And again, we start working the math. Do the parentheses first. So it's going to give us a negative 13. Bring in the calculator. 650 times 13 gives me this. So negative 1500t equals negative 8450. Negative signs cancel each other out. And we would divide by 1500. And we get a time of 5.63 seconds will be the time required for that force to slow this car from that speed down to this one. So this equation does it look familiar? Well, if we look at it in that form, maybe not. But let's go back and look at some of the stuff we've done before. We've talked about Newton's second law, F net equals ma. And before that, we talked about acceleration, where acceleration is final velocity minus original velocity over time. Well, what if we combine these two? Substitute that into there. So we got F net equals m vf minus vo oops, over t. And then let's clean this up a little bit. Move the t over. So our F net times t equals m vf minus vo. And so we get the same equation. we got to remember that this is actually the net force applied to the object. Not any specific force, but the net force. Thank you. Tune in again, and we'll talk about another concept in physics and see if I can explain it to you a little bit better. All right. Thank you. Goodbye.